Hey guys, I'm Brandon Murphy. Sorry about the poopy video quality. I'm kind of uh, remote right now. But um, I presented at the Ableton User Group in Chicago last week, and we were talking about beat making, uh, specifically with, uh, with drum racks and Ableton and a pad controller. And uh, there was a bunch of stuff I kind of grazed over and forgot to mention. Um, so I thought I'd take the opportunity to do a video just for everybody. Uh, the main thing I want to talk about is uh, finger drumming and how to map it, where to put your sounds, uh, technique and technique um, that'll allow you to play you know, the MPC or pad control or MPD, whatever, uh, like an instrument. So we're talking about you know single hit drums uh, and playing it like a kit and playing breaks and stuff like that. So um, I looked long and hard for you know methods on how to do this. Um, you know, watching a lot of YouTube videos and stuff like that, watching the greats, you know, like Jeremy Ellis, you know, Exile, Gel, cats like that. And uh, there wasn't really like a style I could sort of discern from that, that allowed me to just play straight up breaks. So I just spent a day and, and kind of, you know, toyed with it and came up with a really cool system that I haven't really seen anywhere else. I'm sure other people use it, but I just sort of stumbled upon it. I wanted to share it with you guys if you're interested and playing the MPC or MPD uh, like an instrument. It's a lot of fun and it's really cool. So um, basically what I have here is um, I have my, all my single hits mapped out. They're just loaded into the MPC. This is just a, a single hit drum kit that I made. Um, and you know, there's some kicks, snares, hats, open hats, and a couple other miscellaneous sounds like a, you know, there's a flam roll. Rimshot and some uh, floor, uh, mid and floor times. So the technique of this really um, is, uh, it's all personal preference, but you just want to come up with a system, obviously, that works for you and that you can use every time so that it becomes an instrument, an instrument that really changes or transposes or shifts. Um, it always stays the same and you develop a muscle memory for it. And that's kind of what I wanted to do here. So my system is pretty simple. Um, I, I, I play bass, obviously, and uh, I used to play a lot of, like, slap bass when I was, like, a little kid, you know, and um, you know, the thumb to me always kind of equated, you know, the kick and the index always indicated the snare. That's how it works in slap bass. That's basically what you're emulating as, like, a Picasso, you know, kind of drummer. So I've just gone ahead and transposed that to the MPC. That's the biggest deal, really, is, like, how to deal with kicks when you're trying to play realistic drums because you don't have a, you know, you know, a foot pedal. And likewise with, you know, open and closing hats and stuff like that. So you have no feet, you just have hands, but you have lots and lots of fingers. So it works out really well. Um, and the most natural way I found to do this is to put my kicks on the bottom with my thumbs. I play them with my thumbs. And notice there's you know, doubles of each of these right, right down the center. So I don't know if you can see if it had, you know, three and four power kicks. Move right up. Pads five and seven are snares. Move right up, add 10 and 11, perhaps, and that's it. And, you know, you start by, like, just basically playing simple patterns, maybe even doing it in one hand. Stuff like that. Um, and you can do that with just one hand, which is really, really cool. Um, you can do other things like you know, tweak the keyboard or something like that. But um, for this, we're going to also bring in the right hand and left hand instead. This would be your left hand. And these are all um, kind of analogous to playing a real drum kit. So with your dominant hand, you usually play the hats, right? And your non-dominant hand usually plays snare. So you know what I'm saying? Uh, also, another thing to note on that is, you know, kicks tend to fall on the hats, you know. They don't always, of course, but... Right. So it's easier to keep the kick, I think, in the hat in one hand and just sort of use this other one for mainly for snare, but also for, like, accents, um, which I'll show you in a minute. So I'm just going to play some breaks.
stuff like that. Um, you developed this really, really quickly, I think, and the system is really cool. So I'm going to put a little uh, like chart up to show you like how I map everything out, and it's a really cool starting point, I think. So basically, you know, again, to recap, like right down this middle row here, pads. You know, there's a kick, two kicks. Move one up. There's two snares. Move one up. There's two hi hats. And then off to either side of the, the hi hat row, the third row or whatever, you can have you know open hats or like this is like a pedal hat sound. Another important thing, obviously, is you know to set up like mute groups, or choke groups, whatever you want to call them. Uh, and that just emulates a real drummer. Obviously, you couldn't play an open hat and a closed hat at the same time. So the closed hat would mute that out, right? So so we set those up in advance. Um, yeah, so I'm going to throw that chart up, and if you guys have any questions at all, feel free to hit me up. Uh, I think it's a really good starting point, like I said, and feel free to make it your own and deviate from it. But for those that have had sort of trouble discovering a method to do this, this is a, a really cool one. So, cheers. <laughs>